Hi everyone, I'm Alyssa and today I'll be showing you guys how to paint semi-realistic anime hairstyles. So today I'm using Medibang Paint Pro and it's a free drawing software that you can use. For female hairstyles, I'm going to be drawing a straight hairstyle, a wavy hairstyle, and one in braids. <laughs> So when I'm drawing hair, what I'd like to do first is start with a hairline. I'm just gonna sketch that in here and I'm just sketching in another color and I'm using the pencil tool. What this hairline does is it serves as a guideline. Once I have my hairline, I'm just gonna create a new layer as well as work in a different color. So for our straight hairstyle, let's see what she looks like with bangs. And you can see how when I'm drawing bangs, it's coming from the hairline. When I'm drawing hair, what I like to do is kind of visualize it into parts. So I like to start with hair at the front, which is usually bangs if your character has any or any. A lot of anime characters have, have these hairs on the side. I want to have her hair still growing from the hairline, kind of tucked back. Next, I'm adding a few strands on the side of her head to create more depth in her hairstyle. And once I have that, I can draw the hair at the back. So for hair at the back, I'm just going to figure out, mm, I want hair parting to be on this side of her head. And I can continue drawing simple shapes. I'm not drawing lots of detail, lots of strands at this stage. At so I have this side of her hair, and then I'm going to draw the other side. So since her hair is parted here, the flow of the hair is going to be like this. Now I'm going to draw basic shapes again. And notice how I'm drawing over the skull, like around the skull. That's to create a sense of volume, because hair doesn't lay just flat on your head, unless if it is super oily, super wet, and you can always adjust as you go during the sketching stage. Nothing is final. And just some lines over there to help me express the flow of her hair. And since I'm drawing digitally, I can go ahead and check how my drawing is looking by flipping the canvas. And it looks okay to me. Not too skewed or anything like that. And then from here, I can add some more detail. So I'm just drawing some strands near the end of her hair. The hair that's tucked behind the ear. Any strands of hair. I'm expressing the look of layered hair over here. Like hair falling on top of each other rather than just um, one block. And notice how I'm concentrating most of the detail either at the roots around this area or near the end of the hair. What we want to avoid um, including during the coloring stage is having detail like everywhere. So I'm okay with this. Now I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up a bit. And there I just cleaned up the hair. What I'm going to do now is just turn off that sketch layer. Now you wouldn't really be able to see eyebrows behind hair, but I like the look of eyebrows peeking through the hair a little bit. It's a little bit of a stylistic choice. So what I'm going to do is erase just a little bit of it. So I'm just using the lasso tool here. And once I grab those areas of the eyebrows that I want to erase, I have my eraser and I'm just gonna knock back the opacity a little bit lower. So it's not working at 100%. I'm just gonna erase a bit of the eyebrows. There we go. <laughs> For wavy hair, I'm still drawing with the idea of layers in mind. I'm drawing the pieces of hair at the front first, following the hairline and then the hair at the back. I'm also using more curved lines. So I like to think of ribbons when I'm drawing these pieces of hair. You can also think of the number three or the letter S, and you can use those lines to create curves throughout the hairstyle. 
I've also focused on making the hairstyle a little bit wider, since wavy hair is generally more voluminous than straight hair. And to finish off this drawing, I've added more flyaways and individual strands compared to the first hairstyle. And this is to help express that feeling of bounciness and volume. A simple way to draw braids is by drawing a center line first as a guide and drawing these half heart shapes along it. Here, I'm adding in those shapes to my line and I'm drawing one side lower than the other. And this is because braided hair is hair strands interlacing into another. The sides of the braid will get thinner towards the bottom and I'm drawing a hair tie and the ends of the hair. After I'm done the basic drawing, I'm just going back and erasing bits of the center line and making the braid look a bit puffier. Next, I'm drawing an example with more movement involved. I'm using the exact same approach by starting with a center line and drawing my half heart shapes along it and cleaning it up at the end. So right now I'm just drawing the braid hairstyle. Um, so in my head, she's going to have a hairstyle that has all her hair pulled to this side and into a braid. So now that I have all of them drawn, I can get to coloring. And when we're coloring, the method that I like to use when I color is creating a new layer and I'm putting it underneath the layer that I'm going to be coloring for, if that makes sense. So this is gonna be the colors for my straight hairstyle. So I'm gonna make sure it's underneath that layer. So I'm just gonna be naming it straight hair color. I'm going to start coloring the entire area of the hair just in a base color. Start with brown. <laughs> Let's start with something generic. Another method that I like to use to get things done really quickly, if you have clean lines, you could just use the magic wand tool and select areas of your drawing. Another thing you can do, so right now I'm on the color layer, I could always just use the lasso tool and outline where I want the color to go. And then filling it in with the insert button. But since I'm rendering, I'm in that mindset where I don't need everything to look super clean because it's gonna be um, rendered. It's gonna be painted anyway. And for the hairline, I'm kind of making it just a little jaggedy. I'm just gonna set these lines that I drew to multiply. So I'm going up here, blending modes or blending layers, and then I'm just gonna hit multiply. So that way you can see your lines again. Because if your base hair color is too dark and your layer is just set to normal, you won't be able to see the lines. Or if your hair color is super dark, the lines might even appear lighter. So what I like to do after I have my base color is create a new layer and call it shading and I like to clip my layer so what that's doing is clipping anything that I'm drawing to that layer so you can see that I'm drawing all over my screen but it's only stuck to that base color I'm going to select the blending mode to multiply the color is so light but since our 
layer is set to multiply, it appears as a shadow. So I'm just going to start coloring here. For all of the hairstyles, I'm going to use the same light source. Let's say it's about here. Like a soft light source coming from the top left. That way we know we need to concentrate highlights on the side of the head. That also means we'll have more intense shadows on the side on top of the layering shadow. So I'm just going to continue filling in the first layer of shadows. My shadows are going to be on this side. And I just want to focus big areas of shadows as well as shadows on the right side um, and ambient occlusion, which is just like if you have a piece of hair that's layering on another one, it, it will have a shadow casted on it. I just want to put enough shadows to express that volume. So that would be my first layer of shadows. Now I actually want to make a second layer and you're just creating more dimension and more a wider range of values this way. Now the shadows are just getting darker on the second layer. Here we have our hair shaded, but we are missing one pretty crucial thing when it comes to hair, which is the shine or the highlights. Highlights as in where the sun is hitting or the light source is hitting the hair, since hair has oil in it, um, it creates this shiny glossy look. So I'm going to add those in and not highlights as in different colors of the hair, of course. That's a different thing. So another method that I like to use, I use the lasso tool. This is another thing that I do with highlights. I kind of just block out the highlights like this. I'm holding shift. You can see the little plus sign on the cursor. That means it's going to grab more selections. I'm just gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna fill this in with the highlight color. So I can see this base color that we were using. So I'm just gonna color pick that and then go a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow and fill it in. And then when I deselect, I can see what those highlights look like. I wanna reduce the intensity of the highlights on this side of the hair since, since the light source is coming from the top left. Anything at the bottom will be a little less intense. So I'm just going to erase at these highlights a little bit. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything. I can call that rendering. And when I render in Medibang Paint, I like to use the watercolor brush. If you want a bit more texture, you can use the acrylic brush as well. So what I'm going to do here is hold Alt, that brings up the eyedropper tool, and this is the method that I use. I grab the color, grab a color here, and blend together. You can kind of blend back and forth depending on the shape that you want. And I'm just going to do that starting with the highlights. So I blended out most of the highlights, well, if not all of them. Now I'm just working with the shadows and darkening some lines as well. And now you guys can see that I'm just blending out the hairline because before it was just like a bunch of jaggedy lines. You can add another level of detail by adding strands that stick out of the hair 
or any flyaways, etc. I would put it in areas where there are highlights instead of like this strand of hair in the shadow. And then what I'm gonna do is fade out some of these pieces of hair with the eraser tool. I'm just gonna get the soft eraser down here. And there we go. That is our straight hairstyle. So now I'm gonna start working on the wavy hairstyle. We're gonna use some more fun colors instead this time. I like working on multiply layers when I'm shading because it's a convenient digital shortcut. Instead of having to manually pick out a color myself to fit every change in nuance in my base colors, I just need to decide what I want my shadow color to be, and the multiply layer does the rest. When shading, try to avoid using only black or gray. Doing this can make your colors look flat and muddy. I like to use more red, blue, or violet tones. Here you can see I'm shading with a pale pink on my multiply layer. And since her hair is also pink, it shows up as a natural looking shadow color. So the way that I'm going to add highlights to this wavy hair is just slightly different compared to the straight hair since there is more volume in different areas. What I want to do is treat it more like a ribbon. So when we look at a ribbon, this applies to straight hair too. Like when you grab straight hair and bend it, you'll be able to see these peaks with the highlights. But with wavy hair, it's already there. <laughs> so we want to treat uh, highlights and shadows on wavy hair, like a ribbon. After I've placed my highlights, I'm blending them in by color picking the hair with my eyedropper tool, and then I'm blurring the edges of the highlight with my brush to make it less harsh looking. I'm also blending the outline a little bit on the left side where the light is hitting the hair to create a more shiny look. When rendering a braid, I like to add highlights to the middle of each of those half heart shapes that I mentioned before. And doing this will help express the puffiness of the braid. And as I go down to the end, the intensity of the highlight will decrease a bit, since less light is hitting it at the bottom. We also want the highlights at the top to be a bit brighter, and doing this will draw the viewer's attention to the character's face. Lastly, I'm adding individual strands of hair sticking out of the braid and around the rest of the hairstyle. We get a lot of requests for hair tutorials during our cartooning and anime art classes, so I hope this video gave you some insight on how to draw and render hair digitally. Be sure to stay tuned for our male anime hair tutorial as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and feel free to join our art nerd community. And if you support free quality art education, subscribe! Oh,